Yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Zilla Jackson back with another video. Today we're gonna to do like a back-to-back -back thing. Um I'm going to start off with a Gordon Ramsay Why is he so mad video by Patrick CC. And uh yeah, hope you guys like it. Let's get right into it. Because of shows like Kitchen Nightmares and Hell's Kitchen, we know that Gordon Ramsay is kind of a jerk. Get out of my way. Get out of my Way. Get out of my fing way. Get out of my way! I'm not in your way! Get upstairs then! He won't tell me, he's got no balls. It, it, Why are you throwing that risotto no, away? It, it, because it was on the cushion. Shut the fuck up! Missy, Missy, come here, you fat mouth little stupid bitch. Many people attribute. Damn. <laughs> not even 24 seconds in, that's crazy. Gordon's antics to a fake persona that he displays for entertainment. It's just a character, they say. However, when you consider the violent and abusive life Gordon had to endure, you will understand where his rage comes from. Gordon's father, Gordon Ramsay Sr., was a violent alcoholic who Ramsay described as a hard-drinking womanizer. When his father was drunk, he'd either hit the children or throw things around the house. We had to run for our lives, he recalled. We spent many nights, weekends, hidden in the Department of Health and Social Security rooms. Although his father abused and neglected his children, his mother Helen suffered the most. She was beaten relentlessly, even when she was seven months pregnant with Gordon's younger sister. Gordon and his siblings, Diane, Ronnie, and Yvonne, often sat cowering upstairs in their bedrooms while their mother was subjected to physical abuse downstairs. She often feared one day he might kill her. Damn, he sounded like a real piece of shit, to be honest. Sound like a fucking scum of the earth, bro. Excuse my language, but like, that's wild. I mean, it's my opinion. It's my opinion that any, well, like, I don't know. I have a mixed opinion about it. See, I have one opinion that's like, hmm. I do sometimes want to want to hit it hit someone back if they hit me like you know hit me hit someone back but like you know full-on abuse and like full-on just because you enjoy it bro alcohol stuff like that bro it's a piece of shit bro i don't drink well at least i don't i drink on special occasions i smoke on special occasions but that's only if uh if there's actually a reason to drink or smoke. Like, I don't just drink just to drink, like, because it's there. I think that's what goes wrong nowadays, that people just drink and all their skeletons in a closet and stuff like that just comes up whenever they're drunk. And this is like, it, it, rampage right here. Like, come on. Be better humans, man. Be better humans. Gordon was already bigger than his father by the age of 12, but he never fought back. I don't know if I could ever have hit him. We were never big or strong enough to stop him. He had power over all of us. The crazy part is, the kids often spent time in child protective services. Police would take their father away during his outbursts, but it was only temporary as they would eventually return under the same roof as him. They could not escape. To make matters worse, Gordon- That's stupid as fuck like what the fuck he dumb ass shit like you you see that he's abusive and like he he's a threat to children but yet you put him back you put the kids back in the same house that's stupid as fuck I, I, like bro what makes zero sense and you wonder why the kids turn out the same way bro like Either the kids turn out the same way, or, like, it goes above and beyond. By above and beyond, I mean, mm. um, how do I say this? Maybe I should say it in a different language. Should I say it in this? Okay. Um, I'm not even going to say it in a different language. They, uh... They end up doing something like Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Or for those that actually want to 
me to do it in a different language. They commit seppuku. I don't know if I said that right, but hopefully I did. <laughs> Japanese. I'm learning. I'm learning, so please. Jordan's father didn't even support the family financially. His mother was a career nurse, and his father just worked various dead-end jobs. Dad would often have a fallout with someone at work and get fired, and because our home often came with his job, we would become homeless and have to move again. The family lived in roughly 16 different homes across England before settling in Warwickshire. As you can imagine, Gordon's education was negatively impacted due to his father's terrorizing presence. However, he found a positive outlet detached from his home life through football. He was aggressive on the field and could sprint really fast, which landed him a spot on the Rangers football club youth team. Gordon claims that he was scouted fast, which landed him a spot on the Rangers football club. He does not look like he's aged at all. He looks like his face, his facial feature, the facial feature alone looks like he has not aged at all. Right now, he is 56 years old, bro. 56 years old? Okay. He aged a little bit. He just got a couple of wrinkles on his face. He just got a couple more wrinkles on his face. But, like, it doesn't look like he's aged at all, bro. That's crazy. Club youth team. Gordon claims that he was scouted at one of his games by an Oxford United manager, which led him to being signed to the team, but an Oxford spokesman says otherwise. We don't have concrete evidence that he ever played for Oxford United, and none of those coaches around that time can remember him playing for us. This seems like a strange thing for Gordon to lie about, but nevertheless, football was a major passion of his. It was also around this time that Gordon was finally able to flee his father's abuse for good. His mother told Gordon and his sister Diane that tension in their relationship was worse than ever. She forced them to move out of the house for their own safety. At age 16, Gordon and Diane moved out and got their own flat together in Banbury. I'm sorry, bro. My eyes itching. I think I'm allergic. I think I'm allergic to a whole lot of bullshit. Okay, that that was a stretch. That was a stretch right there. But it was a lot of bullshit right there. I don't understand why she didn't divorce or try to get away from him a whole lot sooner. Or maybe she was just afraid. I've never been in it. Well, I guess I have technically, but that's a whole different story. Um, Yeah, that's a whole different story for a whole different time. A whole different period. Uh, But like... I guess it would kind of be hard for a divorce and like split up, huh? Because if he's exhibiting abuse and and a whole lot of other bullshit, like even if you try to leave, he's still going to either do that or something worse, right? Okay. At least I have an understanding. But at the same time... I don't understand because it doesn't seem like you've had attempts of even trying to leave him. I mean, that's just me trying to think of the possible outcomes that you could have done, but it just didn't happen. I don't know. I just think that at the end of the day, you got to think about the kids. Forcing them to leave the house, forcing them to leave the house as kids, like, because one, one authority figure or let's say the head of the household, because technically he's the head of the household. Technically, the father is the head of the household. Um, is exhibiting extreme sort, extreme source of violence and is a bad example and is a threat to you and the kids i will think of the kids first get the fuck up out of there that's that's just my opinion my opinion um let's continue
Roxbury, located in Oxfordshire, southeast England. But at age 19, Gordon's dreams of being a football player were destroyed, which was the best thing that would ever happen to him. After suffering a serious knee injury, Gordon enrolled at North Oxfordshire Technical College to study hotel management. During this time, he worked as a commie chef at the Roxton House Hotel. The commie chef, otherwise known as a junior chef, is at the bottom of the food chain, literally. Most kitchen brigades are organized similarly to the military. Auguste Escoffier is credited for coming up with this hierarchy system while serving as a cook in the French military in the 1800s. Kami chefs help ensure that a kitchen's operations run smoothly. They perform cooking, cleaning, delivery, and other support duties. Uh, I've been into the, into like an actual professional chef's like kitchen. That shit is tense. It's tense. But one fuck up on the on the wrong person's like order or something, bro, is like disastrous. You're getting yelled at. <laughs> you're getting yelled at. You're not gonna hear it. You're getting yelled at while the dude is still cooking. He's still stirring up stuff. You're getting yelled at at the same time. Like, no, I, I couldn't. Bro, it like I had a I had a whole panic attack working at Domino's because the oven was full. <laughs> like I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. Duties as instructed by the chef de partier. After progressing through the ranks and becoming the sous chef, Gordon ran the kitchen and seventy seat dining room at the Wickham Arms until he started I mean, his sexual stuff, relationship but... with the owner's wife. I, I got yelled at okay. because she uh, made uh, you know uh, a go for me. I mean. I Trust me, I mean, what 19-year-old chef, you know, fit as a fiddle, is going to say no <laughs> to a stunning 33-year-old wife of your boss? So, yeah, he got fired. However, his experience... Hey, that dude was pimping. This would land him his first <laughs> job at a Michelin star restaurant and his first appearance on television. Michelin stars are basically the highest badges of honor for restaurants. The stars are part of the Michelin Guide, which employs thousands of inspectors who travel around the world sampling the finest cuisine. These highly trained inspectors will visit hundreds of restaurants a year in order to identify the best of the best. Michelin inspectors are always anonymous to ensure they don't receive preferential treatment during their meals. Inspectors book, dine, and pay for their meals in the same way as an average guest. Once each restaurant in consideration has been inspected, the Michelin Guide director meets with the worldwide teams for what is called star sessions where the rating of each restaurant is debated these sessions often last days with each establishment considered one by one until a unanimous decision is reached restaurants can earn a maximum of three stars michelin quantifies one star as being high quality cooking worth a stop two stars for excellent cooking worth a detour and finally the prestigious three stars represent exceptional cuisine worth a special journey ramsey I ain't gonna lie. 2016 was the first time I found about it. I found out about Michelin stars. Otherwise, I would not have cared. And the only way I found out was because I was watching Food Wars at the time. If you know what Food Wars is, well, <laughs> buckle up because I am a nerd and I watched all of it. All of it. Uh, the best I can explain it is like... <laughs> Every single time you take a bite out of a good person's food in that anime, you have an orgasm. I'm going to let that sink in for a little bit. Yes, you heard that correctly. Um, and with that note, I'm going to continue. because like culinary skills at Harvey's in Wandsworth. This is where a legend was created. The executive chef at Harvey's was Marco Pierre White who is not only world-class, but also considered to be the first celebrity chef. Marco has been rumored to have somewhat of a temper. He has admitted that sometimes he shouts and screams in the kitchen. Gordon says that Marco was brutal, allegedly one night even making a young Gordon Ramsay cry. However, this side of him is rarely seen when the cameras are on. On TV, he's more of an intense savage that struck fear into you without saying or doing too much. No, I didn't make Gordon Ramsay cry. He made himself cry. That was his choice to cry. After working at Harvey's for three years, Ramsey became more... That was the toughest shit I've ever heard. 
from like a chef. <laughs> That's the toughest shit I've heard from a chef <laughs> ever. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. That was tough. I ain't gonna lie. That's tough. Equipped to handle the fast paced and high pressure trade of fine dining. He also probably learned that sometimes to run a kitchen, you need to be aggressive, loud, and Wait, dominant. Wait, like, like, nah. Nah, just imagine. You just got, you just got home. You you yelling at your kids for them doing something stupid at school. And then you be like, why are you crying? You just, you just ask, why are you crying? <laughs> you made me cry. <laughs> That was the most ugliest thing I've ever done. But like, they 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 did that little whining, that whining cry, and it was like, I didn't make you cry. You made yourself cry. It was your decision to make to cry. Honestly, if my mother said that after I got my ass beat for doing something stupid, I would have, I would have contemplated a lot of stuff. <laughs> I would be like, what is my mama on? No. The 1988 documentary Marco shows a behind the scenes look at the chaotic life in the kitchen. Gordon is seen multiple times throughout the documentary calm, listening, learning, and getting a taste for what it was like to be on the big screen. Sadly, his family was still suffering. Gordon's sister Diane decided to return home to live with their parents. One day, their father threw scalding hot milk over their mother, who was in bed, punching and dragging her downstairs. Diane got her mother to the hospital, where they were referred to Women's Aid, a charity in the United Kingdom aimed at ending domestic violence against women and children. The pair found refuge in one of the charity's shelters for six months and got help sorting out Helen's benefits. Her husband had never given her any money, likely a tactic he used to ensure she would never leave. Helen and Diane went home to find the flat ransacked and a postcard on the man piece warning one night when you're least expecting it I'll come back and finish you all I mean I, I so far throughout the video I've talked about how like um I've talked about more of a Hold on. Throughout the video, I talked about more of as as a couple standpoint, like as in a relationship. But I've 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 been in like two relationships. I'm currently single. I don't know why I felt the need to actually push that out there, but I did. Um, that's one part, and the other part is that's fucking wild. This dude is insane <laughs> this dude is insane bro they're trying to get away from you you got mad and you ransacked their their hide their hideout or like their place their place of stay because you're an abusive asshole and you go in and you say i'm going to finish you off one day all off from that moment onward the ran nah nah at one point when are you going we gonna start tucking that pole bro I'll tuck that pole every single where I, every single place I go. That pole will be right underneath my pillow if it has to. Mess with me if you want to. You get shot up. On my mama. <laughs> oh my mama. Ramsey family was finally free of Gordon James Sr. By his mid-twenties, Gordon had already built a resume that would land him jobs working alongside world-class chefs in France, and then as head chef at La Tante Claire in Chelsea, a three Michelin star restaurant. However, Marco White would present something that would stamp Gordon's legacy permanently. In 1993, Marco offered Gordon a head chef position and a 10% share in the Rossmore. The restaurant was renamed Aubergine and achieved Michelin star status 14 months later. Gordon's cooking was so highly sought after that the restaurant had a waiting list of up to six months and bills averaging about 75 euros per person. By 1997, Aubergine won its second Michelin star. Despite the restaurant's success, a dispute began between Ramsey and the business owners, who wanted to expand and turn Aubergine into a chain restaurant. Gordon didn't feel he could duplicate his cooking as a formulaic concept like most chain restaurants do. 
After many years of disagreements and legal battles, Ramsey announced his departure and handed in his notice. The entire staff at the restaurant followed Gordon and participated in a walkout. Ramsey later referred to it as Black Friday. He described the decision to set out on his own as the most important day of my entire cooking career, the most important decision of my life. Gordon decided to purchase and open his own restaurant called Restaurant Gordon Ramsay in Chelsea in 1998. The journey of opening his business venture paired with a television documentary series called Boiling Point. The series only had five episodes, but gave viewers a raw, behind-the-scenes look at Ramsay and his element. Along with his cooking methods and expertise, he tried to impress food critics in hopes of a third Michelin star. Although the series was short-lived, Ramsay's vulgar language and hostile nature were on full display and he quickly became known for his loud mouth and short temper in the kitchen. This guy got fired for drinking water. Standing in front of the fucking glass, drinking fucking water. In front of all the customers. Fuck off. Oh, uh, okay. I heard what he said, right? He said, you're standing in front of the customers drinking water. And that's how he got fired. I mean, I understand you're, you're a chef. Go outside and do it. Like, nobody wants to see you take a break. If you don't get it, that's a joke. Like, that's wild. That is wild. Um, don't I understand it? Not at all. But, like, I guess. I guess. Let's continue, bro. But even with these explosive moments, it still feels tame compared to what would come many years later. After establishing his first restaurant, Ramsay expanded and opened several restaurants across the United Kingdom. He earned his third Michelin star in 2001, making him the first Scottish chef to achieve the feat and securing him a lifelong legacy at the age of 35. His second TV show portrayed Gordon in a much more genuine and humble way. Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares was a 2004 show where Gordon visited failing restaurants and helped to improve the establishment establishments in just one week. He then revisited the restaurants months later to see how e Hey, I ain't gonna lie, Kitchen Nightmares was funny as shit. Like, on them days where it was, it was nothing to watch, bro, you just randomly scroll to this channel from DirecTV, it was channel, like, 30, or not channel 30, it was, like, channel 106 or something like that. It was, like, one of them large number channels, bro. I ain't gonna lie, I was a I was a goober child, so I remember all the Nickelodeon channels. It was one three hundred three hundred was uh was Nickelodeon, three oh one was Nicktoons and no three oh one was the second Nickelodeon channel and then it was three oh two Nick Jr. three oh three Teen Nick. I was like no three oh three was uh was Nicktoons, and then it was Teen Nick. Yeah, I was, I was a, I was a little goober child, man. And then uh, Boomerang two ninety nine, two ninety eight, and two ninety seven. Two ninety eight, two ninety seven was uh, was Cartoon Network, and I just stayed on that the whole time. And then somewhere in between, it was Freeform and Disney Channel. And I just went on a ramble. Oh my gosh. Each business fared in his absence. Kitchen Nightmares was a huge commercial hit. Ramsey initially came off as quite relatable. He was very candid, but still supportive in a positive manner and genuinely wanted to see businesses succeed. He used his time wisely, learning the staff's strengths and weaknesses and the town's culture. Wait, I'm sorry for buzzing a lot, but like, is it... Wait, didn't the show got, get canceled? Didn't the show get canceled because Gordon Ramsay wasn't getting mad enough? And the only reason why Gordon Ramsay was getting mad at them, like getting mad at most of them, was because of things that the producers were telling them. I remember I remember watching a video about it. I'm not gonna dig through and try to figure out what video it was because like that's a lot. Um but like I remember watching a video that said that they would tell they would tell restaurant owners to to like do stuff to make Gordon Ramsay purposely mad because that's what the ratings wanted. That's what the ratings said they wanted. But then 
at a certain point, R Gordon Ramsay was like done with it, so he, the whole show got canceled. That's crazy, man. Surrounding each restaurant. He also used collective plural pronouns like we when describing each restaurant and what needs to be done, fully integrating himself as a part of the team and part of the solution, not merely operating as an onlooker giving directions. This Ramsey made for far more compelling television and left viewers excited about the food and entrepreneurship. The more poise and calculated attitude carried on to his next televised culinary show, Hell's Kitchen UK. The show created a competition between two kitchens, featuring 10 aspiring that chefs competing so for garbage. a prize of 250,000 euros, right. money that the winner could use to start his or her own restaurant. This they were split into two teams of six, nice. one celebrity chef, along with five members. And just look at the difference. Now what are we going to do? Right, can we taste now, please? Oh, that looks like oat. That's oat. <laughs> Is the worst risotto. Oh man, I give up. That is shocking. No, I'm trying. <laughs> My hardest chef. Fuck. Oh man, what? <laughs> Due to the show's success, Gordon worked with the Fox Network to produce an American version with the same name. First premiering in 2005, Hell's Kitchen US followed a different format. I mean. Hmm. Top three hot hits, bro, like throughout all the countries, man, has to literally be Russia, America, and Germans. Russians, Americans, and Germans have to be top three hot heads. Like, there's no other way. And for a already overly aggressive Scottish scottish chef to come to america and boss americans americans around expecting not to get yelled back the same way <laughs> uh, disaster waiting to happen and what a beautiful disaster it was this is where gordon's asshole persona was formed Mugas! he jumped up and now off back on your section. Why? Because I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. You're not a fucking cook either. Move your fat ass. You donkey! Shit! You're fucking useless, you know that. You're cooking in a burnt pan, you fucking dick! Fucking donkey! Don't let him cook a fucking thing! The US version of Hell's Kitchen surpassed the UK. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Had some technical issues right there. Hopefully I recorded most of the video already. But let's continue. Hurry up, Giovanni. Yeah, but I'm not dick face chef. Yeah, say that again. I said I'm not dick face yeah, chef. Yeah, you're pissed, are you? I'm not. not as look at me, look at me, eyes. Not as pissed as I am. You fucking are, donkey. It became so excessive that people online started accusing the producers of staging fake drama for more entertaining television. People also claimed that the editors use editing techniques to make certain contestants appear as poor performers to justify their elimination later. The most obvious example was the case of Amanda Tech Moore, who you can clearly see cooking here, but the only problem is that she was eliminated three episodes earlier. Essentially, they are using old footage of contestants, for example, Gordon yelling at someone in episode one, to justify their elimination in episode 10, even if they didn't do anything wrong that day, since the show is not premiering live and viewers wouldn't be able to notice the difference. Another major controversy in regards to the show being staged occurred when contestant Joseph Tinnelly from season 6, during one elimination round, angrily confronted Ramsey, challenging him to a fight, before being escorted off the set. You want a f***ing jacket? You want to talk some sh Let's go step outside, mother I ain't here for that, dog. The incident drew criticism from viewers suggesting the scene was potentially fake and conducted to add more drama and tension to the show to increase viewer interest. However, it was this tumultuous persona that may have ruined his UK television presence. Okay, this was asked for well done, and this person is sending it back. And let me just tell you something. You know, in terms of well done, look, we braised it. What is that? That's well done. That is well done, so stop what bringing me shit! What about this, Gordon? That is well done! What about this? It's well done! Without the added sound... That's just wild, man. That's wild. Honestly, after after my whole situation just happened with my computer and all this other bullshit, 
like my whole energy depleted so i do apologize if i don't seem very genuine about my reaction again i do apologize uh but let's continue effects and intense music, Gordon's screaming looks less performative, which made viewers think he was actually just a jerk. But the USA audience couldn't get enough of Gordon. He was a rock star. He worked with the Fox Network again to produce an American version of Kitchen Nightmares. First premiering in 2007, Kitchen Nightmares US followed the exact blueprint as the original, as the owners invited Gordon to spend a week with the failing restaurant to revive the business. However, like the US version of Hell's Kitchen, Kitchen Nightmares was more dramatized and featured Ramsey displaying a visibly short temper, regularly yelling profanities and insulting his staff. Gordon once even said the F word 298 times in just two episodes. When you saw those two Kitchen Damn. Nightmares condensed into one, last year when they had those 298 fucks, I wasn't proud of that. There has come a time when, at the age of 43, I'm getting a bit tired of the foul-mouthed bully chef. In that same interview, Ramsey was adamant in his refusal to pander to elderly British viewers by trying to act like anyone other than himself. So on one hand, he admits he isn't proud of his excessive outbursts. On the other, he isn't just gonna act like a proper lad to please his UK audience. Plus, in 2017, he came out with a show called The F Word, so I don't think he really cares that much. Both versions of Kitchen Nightmares produced seven seasons and were cancelled collectively in 2014. As of September 2021, Ramsey has accumulated a net worth estimated to be around $220 million. Damn, bro. I don't understand the whole net worth thing, bro. Because you could be worth so much money, but yet you only have $20 in your pocket, bro. I don't know. I don't know. I think we should determine. No, I think that's how it is already. Net worth is determined by how much money you've earned throughout the years of working, right? Or like throughout the years of your presence on on platforms, right? Hold on, there's one person I do want to know what's their net worth now. Because I remember back then his net worth was like two million. Ah, uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it dollars with an estimated salary of 225,000 per episode. Gordon typically earns roughly 45 million dollars per year from his media and restaurant business. His shows account for more than 75 hours of programming and more than 150 million dollars in ad sales for Fox. With restaurants nice. in the UK, US, France, Italy, China, South Korea, and Qatar, his empire has expanded on a global scale. Evidently, being a Head pays pretty well. But Gordon is also able to act like this because he has started at the very bottom and grinded for decades mastering his craft. These days you could see him on TikTok telling people how terrible their cooking is. Whether his rage comes from his father's abuse or from the perspective of a passionate teacher wanting his pupils to learn, it never gets old seeing Gordon Ramsay absolutely destroy someone's cooking. I mean at the end of the day, would you rather have a, a genuine asshole or a disingenuine nice person i'd rather have a genuine asshole i'd rather like somebody tell me off than fucking be on bullshit bro to be honest what the fuck? oh my god i forgot about keybinds already i literally forgot about keybinds already i had there it is jesus christ Oh my gosh, there's a lot going on right now. All right. Uh, with that said, y'all, it's been a good one. Still haven't touched that pile of clothes in the back. That shall be getting touched up and shipped out and put away very soon. Uh, I appreciate you guys. I know it's, this is going to be a long video, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh my God, I just knocked off, knocked over my mic. You. Goodbye. Y'all have a good day. Stay cool. It's, it's hot and all that other stuff. Later. Peace.